watching UNO with Dr. Amrish Saxena. Hello students, today is Saturday 5th of October 2019. Today we will try to unfold a story which is coming from Jammu and Kashmir. It is about the election of block development councils. The elections are scheduled on 24th of October and the process has already started. Now what this election is about and how this whole uh, process has been come into action. For this we have to understand what are these block development councils and how these elections are taking place. For this we have to take reference to the Panchayati Raj system that we have in India. This system started right from after the independence. A committee was formed under the leadership of Balwant Rai Mehta which is commonly known as Mehta Committee and as per the recommendation the structure of the Panchayati Raj was established in India though it has been in India since uh, ancient time but it was properly formalized and structured and it is a state subject. This means the Panchayati Raj elections have to take place at the state level. Since this system was not functioning very well in India so that is how the central government decided to bring a law in this regard and to bring a constitutional amendment. This constitutional amendment is known as 73rd amendment in Indian constitution which happened in 1993 and according to this an amendment was made in article 243. This amendment makes it mandatory to a state government to amend their respective laws as per the central law and to make sure that elections are taking place uh, to the local bodies. So this is a form of local self-government according to which this is a three-tier system and elections are to take place at the village level, panchayat level, at the block level and at the district level. So a smallest unit is Gram Panchayat, then there is a block level council or committee and then district level committee which is commonly known as Zilla Parishad. Now going back as to what is happening in Kashmir, these elections to block development councils have been announced. Now who are going to vote in this election? The Panch and Sarpanch. If we look into the latest figures, the last year in 2018, the election of Gram Panchayats happened. But this election was boycotted by PDP and National Conference, the two major parties of Jammu and Kashmir, though Congress and BJP participated in this election. So we find that in the 10 districts of the valley, there are 19,600 approximate posts of Panch and Sarpanch. But out of this number, only 7,000 were elected. In many constituencies or in many Gram Sabhas or Gram Panchayat, there were no candidates to contest the election. If we look into the overall figures, there are 64 percent of voters available for casting their vote in the election of the Block Development Council which is going to happen on 24th of October. There are districts like uh, Pulwamba or Kulgam uh, wherein there are 90 percent posts are like vacant. If we look into the overall figure then we find that almost two-third voters are missing and these are not the common voters because otherwise if we look into Kashmir we find always there is a low turnout. These are the voters who are non-existing. So uh, what will happen in elections nobody knows though the government has announced that in view of elections it has lifted ban on the political activities of political leaders in Jammu and Kashmir but we know that the clampdown is, is still on though the restrictions have been eased and two former chief ministers are already in detention then how this election going to happen, how much turnout will be there and what exactly will be the, the, the implications of the conduct of this result that we would know by the last week of this month. Now going 
to another story uh, that is a very very pertinent story yesterday reserve bank of india announced its quarterly policy and as per this policy reserve bank has further reduced the repo rate to 5.1 this repo rate is uh, uh, astonishingly is very very low and if we look at the comparative figures this is the 7 year low 7 year low means i mean if, if we look into the figures of 2019 only and mind it this repo rate is announced by the reserve bank every 2 months so it's a policy which is revised every 2 months so uh, in this year looking from the figures from february 2019 to october 2019 continuously there is a decline which is seen in uh, in in february 2019 this uh, repo rate was 6.25% then after 2 months it was reduced to 6% then further it was reduced to 5.75% then another 2 months it became 5.4% and now it has come down to 5.1% why this reduction is being taken up by reserve bank so basically this is for two reasons because the kind of economic condition conditions which are there in the country we are facing two problems one is reduction in demand and another is reduction in the private investment so for giving a spur to the private investment uh, very recently the government has reduced the corporate rates now the challenge is to give an impetus to the demand because if demand will increase then the consumption will also increase but that is not happening so that is how reserve bank of india is continuously reducing the repo rate so that loans are available comparatively at a cheaper rate and then people start buying more and for the retail consumers obviously this is a good news uh, because the home loan will be cheaper then the car loan will be cheaper despite all these measures being taken by the government the gdp is not increasing though the gdp is calculated for the whole of the financial year and then every quarter the figures are calculated and are notified and then there is a forecast and after the financial year is over the actual calculations take place but if we look into the calculations which are happening this year only since february till october so these figures are also being revised again and again by the government in the beginning of this year the government was hoping for this financial year the gdp rate at 7.4 then it was further reduced to 7.2 then it was reduced to 7% then 6.9% and now it has been reduced to 6.1% and this is drastically low if we compare it to the figures of last 7 years or last 9 years and for reference i can tell you in the financial year 2010 and 11 the gdp figures were at 9.3% the real relief will be if the repo rate is decreasing and simultaneously the gdp is increasing that will be the real relief to the common people that will also result in an improvement in the economic health of the country let us see how the things will be unfolded in the coming weeks and months that is all in today's edition